In this video, we're going to be discussing, can you run a diesel engine for a million miles without ever replacing the engine oil? Are engine oil changes unnecessary and stupid? Is it going to blow up your engine, damage the bearings? Is it going to keep the oil cleaner? One company is making the claim that an oil bypass system would be better than doing oil changes, so let's analyze their claims. Hey guys, this is Joshua with Dep Channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing an interesting topic, and that is, can you run an engine for a million miles and never get an oil change? Are oil changes optional and unneeded? Reason for madness. Weird question, isn't it? I mean, you might be thinking, does this guy not know how engines work? I know how engines work. I build them every day. What brought up the subject? Well, a little while ago, a man named Joe emailed me, and I get emails every day about cat engines, and he had a C7 cat, and he said he was running a Gulf Coast Filters bypass oil filter. Now, I've gotten lots of questions in the past about bypass oil filters, but for whatever reason, I went to their website and started reading through it. Now, their website is very interesting. Now, I made a video a little while ago discussing Lucas Oil and how their claims are unfounded in my opinion we have broken down all of the key benefits of the lucas oil and how they make a bunch of claims don't have any studies or reasons for why their claims would work gulf coast is the opposite they make a lot of claims but they explain in detail why their claims would work not only that they don't have a huge case study but they did Get an engine to run a million miles with no oil changes. Well, technically one oil change, but I would say within a million mile period, if you do zero or one oil change, not a big difference. Let's look at their claims and then we'll discuss them and then we will see what we think. So this is their website or one of the pages in the website and their website, of course, they're trying to sell you a product, folks, bypass oil filters, but that doesn't mean what they're saying is incorrect. Now, also full disclosure, I'm not being paid. I'm not making one penny from them for this. So I'm trying to be objective as possible. And they've got a lot of articles from people using their products, them analyzing their own products, and the products are actually pretty reasonably priced, which I'll discuss in a second. Now, they are not the only manufacturer of oil bypass systems, of course. There's AMS Oil, Clean Oil, Sinister Diesel makes them. There's probably a hundred different manufacturers, but we're going to stick to one to keep it simple. So what's really the difference between a bypass oil filter is it is not pulling all the oil going through the engine. It's siphoning off a little bit, unlike a normal engine oil filter, which is called a full flow filter, which filters pretty much all the oil going to the oil gallery which is where your bearings and everything get their oil. But since it has to filter a large volume of oil at once, it can't filter a ton at a low micron rating. So what's the micron rating of a coffee filter? Well, it's about 20 microns, which is the same as a full flow filter, about 20 to 40 microns. And if you don't know what a micron is, a micron is one millionth of a meter. So here's a comparison chart. So the CAT 1R1880 is going to be filtering down to about the size of a grain of pollen or a white blood cell, anything above that. But it can't filter much below that or else it wouldn't be able to flow enough for oil needs the engine. A bypass filter though is gonna get way down there, one to five microns, so bacteria and stuff, very, very tiny. So they will filter smaller particles out. Now their claim is there's three major contaminations that damage engines, which is solid contamination, moisture contamination, which would be water, and then condition cause contamination. And they're saying that this is what causes bearing damage. And that is one of the reasons bearings do get damaged. Also other engine components. There are other reasons, of course. This is coolant in the oil. This would not have been prevented by running a filter system. Of course, you have mechanical breakdowns of gaskets and components also not going to be affected. But they make the claim that oxidation, nitration, as well as acid formation is mostly due to moisture accumulation in the engine oil. And these systems absorb moisture out of the oil, which is... Now, I then stumbled across this, which is their 1 million mile with one unnecessary oil change, which sounds funny to me. But they do have pictures of the bearings and stuff. 
And folks, I've seen a lot of main and rod bearings. These rod bearings look great for being a million miles. This is the overhead, so you can see the valve train there. The oil doesn't look great, but the metal components, the bearing journals and such, cam lobes, look really good. The grittiness is pretty bad though. I wish these were higher resolution. And they even pour the oil back in the engine. That is hilarious. So they also sell fuel cleaning products, but this is their filter systems, depending on what size engine you have. And they're generally reasonably priced. It's about $1,200 for most of the diesel engines that I would be working on. And that comes with filters and sample kits. So it would end up saving you if you negate having to buy oil and an oil filter every 10,000 miles, about $2,000, maybe a little more, every 100,000 miles. But would it protect your engine more? Potentially, we're gonna discuss that next, but it will protect your wallet from being destroyed. This week's Destruction of the Week would not have benefited from a bypass oil filter system, folks, because they put the wrong size cooling jet nozzles in. Look at the size of the ports on the cooling jets. Way different. Cooling jets are not optional, and you, as you can see, one of the cylinders with a smaller nozzle overheated, destroyed the cylinder. You can see the vertical scoring in the cylinder. Of course, the piston expanded out, destroyed the rings and the piston. Always make sure your cooling jets are installed properly and they are the right ones. Thank you to the viewer that submitted these pictures and let's get back to our discussion. So what's my opinions on the claims they just made? Of course, basically their claims are, oils don't really break down, they become saturated with contaminants, mostly moisture, which lead to oxidation and nitration. Also, you get a lot of carbon soaking, very fine materials in the oil. And that's mostly why your oil will need replaced over time. Their claims are, from what I can tell, accurate. A conventional full flow oil filter is not going to remove moisture. It's not going to remove very, very fine particles, not going to remove most of the carbon. So what they're saying, from what I can tell, is accurate. So I think if you were to run an oil bypass system like this, it would, or it should, extend your oil service life. Now, if it'll extend it, why not just never replace it? Well, you could. I would say if you wanna try it, go ahead, it's your engine. I would say though, if you are gonna try their system of just replacing your bypass filter and then your full flow filter at intervals, definitely go with a oil sampling service. Every time you change your filters, pull an oil sample just to make sure the oil is still in good condition. So what might be some problems with never replacing your oil? Well, let's discuss that. So I can think of a few examples why you would still wanna replace your oil even if you're running this bypass system. Of course, your engine manufacturer is going to tell you to replace your oil anyway because they are the manufacturer and they're trying to protect your engine. First would be fuel dilution. During the combustion process, a very, very small amount of fuel is going to get past your piston rings and wind up in the engine oil. Being a petroleum distillate, just like engine oil, doesn't evaporate like moisture will. Also, a filter is not going to be able to separate diesel fuel from engine oil. Now, especially in cold conditions, you're gonna get a little bit more of fuel dilution in your oil. Now normally on a good running engine where the cylinder walls are in good condition, the piston rings are in good condition, and you're getting adequate combustion, this is never a problem because even with a little bit of fuel dilution, it's not going to thin out the engine oil enough to make a difference. But if you're never replacing your engine oil, I feel like over time, you'll be slowly accumulating more and more fuel in the oil, and since you're not replacing it, you'll never be able to adequately bring that up. Now, a way this might counterbalance is the engine's always burning a little bit of oil also. So perhaps the burn rate of the engine oil in the engine will compete with the fuel burn rate or the fuel contamination rate. And just by topping off the engine oil over time, this would never be a problem. Now the next one would be coolant dilution in the engine oil. Now, this can happen from a variety of places. Cracked cylinder head, bad head gasket, oil cooler failure. 
You could have bad liner O-rings, a bad liner, bad sleeve. If you don't have liners, bad water pump. Now, their filter will remove normal moisture, but I do not believe if it is fully contaminated with coolant, a filter is going to remove all of that. And I think it would be way easier to just replace your oil at that interval. So that is another potential reason you would want to change your engine oil is coolant getting into the engine oil. Of course, that's a problem. That's not a normal running condition problem. Now, what about thermal breakdown of engine oils? Their claim is engine oils don't really lose their lubricity or their lubricating properties. And if you do keep them in the appropriate range of temperature, I could see that being accurate, especially since you're going through such a higher filtration process. But engine oil at times is exposed to very high temperatures. And if it gets much above 250 degrees, it can start to break down. Filtering is not going to help that situation. The oil is still gonna be there. It's just not gonna have the same properties it used to. Maybe their claim there would be that as it breaks down, it forms bigger particles and that gets filtered out. I think their claims are very interesting though. They provide a lot of evidence as to why they would work. They've done at least one case study. There are other articles of people trying their system and the cost of oil changes is quite expensive with oil prices right now. So would it balance out with not having to do oil changes with potentially, potentially doing some sort of engine damage? I'm not sure. You would really want a fleet of vehicles where you could cut the fleet in half and say, this 10 trucks is gonna run normal oil change intervals. This one's gonna do the bypass filter system. See what happens. It's really hard if you have one engine to analyze and say that, this is an excellent system and this is not a good system. I thought it was an interesting article. I thought you guys would think it was an interesting topic. So so what do I think of oil bypass systems? I think they're actually a very good idea. It can really only keep your oil cleaner. Whether you wanna not replace it anymore, that's up to you. I probably still would, although you could probably extend the oil change intervals. But the system's relatively inexpensive. The filters are relatively inexpensive. And I think your engine over time would be happier and benefit from running a bypass system. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. This is entertainment. Look at that. Okay.